Bene, buonasera a tutti. Good afternoon. I would like to thank our guests. Thank you for being here. Last year, from the meeting, we launched the idea of a Marshall Plan for the young people. The idea stemmed from the evident difficulties for young people to find a job. The unemployment rates were very high, the uh, very numerous NEET, and some signs which were not encouraging. After one year, we uh, met once again, and we tackled this problem once again, um, finding ourselves in a slightly different situation, because in the meantime, the general conditions of the economy um, have been improving. There are some figures on uh, unemployment for young people, uh, which is a little bit more favorable, and uh, some ideas of the Marshall Plan have already been uh, implemented. Yet, we should not only look at the present situation, because the challenge is going to become uh, more and more complicated for the future. As the Pope said, we are uh, experiencing the change of uh, a change of uh, um, an epochal change, and the world of unemployment uh, is also changing, as Minister Kalenda stated. We are confronted with uh, uh, a high degree of polarization. There are more job opportunities for all those jobs linked to the sectors uh, uh, related to innovation and they lead to uh, high wages. On the other hand, the uh, jobs opportunities increase when it comes to services for uh, the people. But in this case, contracts are precarious and the wages are lower. In the middle, we have a gray area, the area of challenge. Pessimist people and some researchers say that 50% of the current uh, uh, jobs will be lost uh, in the Western world uh, in the next 20 years. So uh, confronted with this situation, we can complain, we can simply decide not to act, or we can accept the challenge. Yet this challenge should be accompanied, aided. We, we need to have instruments helping us and helping young people, but not only them, because its repercussions will be felt by many uh, workers. And so we need instruments in order to tackle this challenge. So what we would like to do today is to follow up uh, looking for uh, a possible pathway enabling us to uh, reverse the reverse the trend. We asked Professor Rosina a professor of demography and statistics at the uh, Catholic University of Milan to help us understand the situation of young people. Uh, those who deal with these topics will probably have read many uh, contributions by uh, the professor on uh, magazines and on newspapers. So I would like to leave the floor to the professor because, first of all, we need to uh, understand which challenge we are confronted with. So in order to help young people um, get uh, a job is, uh, first of all, to understand their problems and their difficulties. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here. It is always a pleasure uh, for me to uh, reason with you and to think about these problems. Uh, with the other speakers. These topics are, of course, uh, topical because they are uh, very much the problems of many uh, families. I will uh, start by saying that I'm going to be uh, the most boring of all the speakers because I will have to show you some slides and I will uh, have to focus on, on some figures. And the other speakers will probably say something more encouraging. I will start from the title, beautiful title of this year's meeting. Um, the um, inheritance may be read in two different ways. Either the heritage which passes on and is conveyed and passed on from uh, parents to sons and daughters, so micro-individual level, but we also have a macro-social uh, transmission 
uh, transferring of the inheritance from the older generations to the younger generations. We will, Italy as a country and as a cultural welfare model, have some typical features which are also uh, abnormalities. And these specific features include the fact that we have a system in which there is lots of uh, generosity when it comes to private aid given uh, by parents to their sons and daughters. And in many cases, families only have one kid. Yet, on the other hand, we are not so much careful to investing, when it comes to the uh, public uh, investments, uh, in favor of new generations. So the, uh, the uh, context is um, visible in the fact that Italy is one of the countries with the highest rate of private investment, but it is at the same time uh, one of the countries having the uh, highest public debt. So we have a cultural um, scenario which refers to the uh, material and symbolic uh, transmission between uh, generations. And it is linked to a central, to a core aspect of uh, uh, demography, which is that of uh, um, the uh, renewal from one generation to another. If the um, generational transfer and renewal works well, the society will thrive. If it does not work properly, the conditions of those uh, who will come after us will uh, be worse. So in order, in order to focus on the problem, to focus the problem, I will not start with figures, but I will start uh, from a book. And uh, this is a quotation by Italo Calvino's uh, uh, Invisible Cities, Le Città Invisibili, one of my favorite Favor, uh, favorite authors. Inside this book, this book I found the most effective representation of uh, what a uh, generational um, uh, renewal should be. Melania's population renews itself. The participants and the dialogues die one by one, and meanwhile, those who will take their place are born, some in one role, some in another. When one changes role or abandons a square forever or makes his first entrance to it, there is a series of changes until all the roles have been reassigned. So here we have a dialogue which may continue indefinitely in time and it may evolve thanks to the fact that the old stakeholders and actors may be constantly and are constantly replaced by new actors. For this uh, dialogue to, um, to thrive, we need two conditions. First of all, the new entries, so the new actors, um, must have the uh, access to the stage so they can enter into the stage and they can uh, reach their role. If they find on the stage someone who has uh, been on the stage, on the scene, and they do not want to uh, go away from the stage, clearly we will not have uh, this renewal. The second condition is that those who enter the square are ready and willing to add something new, so to bring an added value vis-a-vis -vis the previous uh, actors. They should not simply limit themselves to repeat the, um, the plot or the, um, the script of the predecessors. They should add a new view, uh, a new way of uh, talking about, of narrating reality. These two conditions are fundamental if we are to have a functioning uh, generational uh, renewal. Italy, as a country, um, has not been having a uh, perfectly functioning 
uh, generational uh, renewal. This chart represents the model of development that Italy has had after the Second World War. We start from 1965, but we could uh, uh, go backwards. This is the chart representing uh, uh, the fact that Italy has impoverished uh, the inheritance towards the future. So you can have a look at two indicators which are different uh, from one another, but they are astonishingly um, specular to one another. The uh, average number of, uh, cha of children per uh, woman, and you can find the red dots, and you have uh, uh, the curve which uh, diminishes and uh, on the blue line you can see the increase in the public debt. So this means that there was a phase in Italy's history in which things were working properly. These two indicators are closely linked to uh, generational renewal. The number of children per woman in a population uh, where people live longer and longer um, enables to have a balance between uh, an old and new generations uh, if women have uh, at least two children each. And we started from very high, uh, a very high number of children per woman after the Second World War, but then the curve decreases and this leads to the uh, impoverishment uh, of um, to a worsening of the situation. On the other hand, we have an increase of public debt. So the new generations will uh, have less chance to build their future uh, in, uh, in a favorable way. After the Second World War, the public debt was uh, uh, sustainable. The levels were uh, adequate for uh, the right balance between generations, and then it started to grow, and uh, it is now um, unsustainable. As you can see, when these two indicators met, crossed in the, uh, in the part related to the uh, end of the 1970s, uh, and so you can see the trend of these two um, uh, lines, so Italy sort of self-trapped into a pathway of a low development, and it has never managed to uh, get out of this situation. And the economic crisis uh, even worsened the scenario. At a certain point, Italy simply got lost. So Italy managed during a certain historical uh, phase to um, have a functioning uh, ratio and relationship between uh, demography and the welfare, uh, which was expanding. Then something simply stopped working. After reaching uh, uh, good well-being levels for the uh, middle classes, uh, Italy uh, lost sight of uh, the challenges of the time and simply decided to um, close up and to defend the uh, well-being levels. So attention was uh, uh, diverted towards a defense of the status quo. And we lost sight of the challenges and the possibilities to create new spaces and new opportunities and the fact of uh, giving new chances and instruments to those who could reverse the trend. And I'm referring to women and the new generations. So these components, these parts of the society, uh, progressively um, moved towards the margins of society. And they did not become a driving forces for uh, the um, increase of uh, well-being in Italy. Uh, indeed, we have um, Italy has uh, the um, growth rate of uh, um, women uh, employed and young people employed, which is uh, among the uh, lowest in Europe. We needed uh, tools to uh, to give women uh, the chance to 
um, to combine family and employment, and these instruments were not given to women. Therefore, Italy has been recording a low growth rate, but with a low growth rate, if you have to uh, maintain uh, good levels of well-being, you uh, end up by um, decreasing the number of children. But in this way, uh, the opportunities uh, are reduced and young people enter into this uh, defensive spiral and they get trapped within uh, the uh, within their families and they continue to remain within the family uh, as adults as well so this trend has simply uh, crushed the entire country and now and now italy has difficulties in getting out of the uh, of this situation the consequence is uh, that of having a generation which is uh, blocked uh, sons and daughters of uh, uh, parents uh, who had uh, a high level of uh, social mobility. And uh, these children didn't manage and are not managing to uh, achieve something important when it comes to exploiting their potential. So they are forced to adjust themselves uh, to uh, a situation which is not satisfactory vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the employment, vis-a-vis -vis the choices for life, and vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the fact of, that they need to remain uh, to live with their parents. So this is the position of Italy, which is uh, uh, totally uh, unfavorable. We have two indicators. One is demographic, and the other one is uh, economic. The economic indicator is the horizontal, and ref it refers to the need. Uh, those young people not working and not um, engaged in education. So inactive population. And in the, on the vertical axis, we have the rate of uh, um, young adults uh, aged between 25 and 34, who instead of being protagonists of growth, are passively depending, uh, dependent uh, um, uh, from their parents. So we have, uh, Italy has the worst combination possible the new generations are not the key players in a country which should be um, competitive and um, a country which is at the state of the art because the young generations should be uh, trained properly in order to uh, boost the uh, economy of the country. So country is a nation which is blocked when it comes to uh, to empowering young people to conquer their um, autonomy, their independence. And so country has not managed to conquer uh, the core of the stage. Yet, and here I will start by giving you some encouraging figures. This is the key research on, uh, um, on uh, young people the willingness and the desire of young people to enter the stage can be found. We have lots of examples of this willingness to young people to enter the stage. Uh, this chart refers to the differences between young uh, people in Italy and young people in other countries, the willingness to carry out uh, uh, volunteering activities and to promote uh, the well-being of the community in which I live, to be trained uh, and informed vis-a-vis uh, -vis what happens, uh, the desire to carry out volunteering activities. So when it comes to all this aspect um, in which young people can act, the, um, the, ra the rates and the figures you see are uh, higher than those of young people living in other European countries. So young people really desire and really want to um, do their best, uh, yet they have less opportunities. So the question is, uh, how can we help young people in Italy to accomplish what they, uh, what they want? to be active and to participate in the, um, in the growth process of the country. There's a core moment where we should, uh, in which we should focus, on which we should focus, namely the transition between the school and the um, lay and labor. But 
we should not only focus on labor, on the employment, we should focus on life, so transition towards the adult life. So we should help younger generations to um, achieve a successful transition from the school to the uh, life as adults. The point of arrival of the transition to the adulthood is that of conquering your autonomy from your parents, so forming and building your own family and being able to make your own choices. So the point of arrival of the transition between the school and labor and employment is that of having an employment that enables you to be autonomous, independent from your parents, thereby opening up uh, uh, possibilities to build your own life pathway, to valorize your own uh, human capital, and to fulfill uh, yourself, uh, if possible, um, with uh, a satisfactory employment. So what do we need to strengthen these transitions? Well, it is trivial, but you, you, you need, we need a solid, a sound training, which is different from the training of 10 years ago. We need basic and vocational training. We need to have digital competencies and digital skills, which are becoming more and more important. But in addition to sound training, we also need something else. And this is clear from research uh, papers uh, and from the service that we carry out on the territory. We need the possibility to start a virtuous cycle between doing and learning. Learning means getting into a circular pathway in which you try and understand the world and then you try to act and work and have success in the world. You. Um, you understand what you can do and what can, you cannot do, then you learn something more in order to be able to do something more and even better. Young people uh, who manage to get inside this cycle may have difficulties, but in the end they succeed. So what makes a difference is um, the fact of being a young person with a proper basic training who manages to get into this cycle and to um, uh, enhance uh, his or her skills, and those who uh, fail to do so. A driving force for this virtuous cycle uh, are the life skills. What are life skills? The abilities, the capabilities that enable you to have a versatile, positive, effective, uh, approach when it comes to um, meeting and facing the challenges of life and of uh, the labor market. Life is full of challenges, so you cannot start from a training which remains freezed uh, for the entire uh, uh, life. You need to have a system in which you uh, can uh, constantly improve and um, you manage to learn during the entire course of your life. These uh, cross skills uh, are non-specific uh, skills of a profession. They are wider and, and they uh, include um, problem solving, the uh, ability to question your, your skills, uh, the entrepreneurship, and they have two fundamental aspects helping young people, namely strengthening the capability to be able to live in the world and to be able to live in a world which is constantly changing. Not only uh, living in a world which is changing, but also acting successfully in a world which is changing. So being an active, positive part of changes, being able to know uh, and to recognize uh, uh, opportunities and changes and being able to grasp opportunities and get ready when uh, an opportunity comes by. The other important aspect of life skills is that they help transforming technical know-how into an ineffective uh, organizational and uh, uh, employment uh, experience. So you start from your own technical um, skills, you implement them con uh, concretely to have success. This is not only theory. 
when we work concretely with young people uh, finding themselves in uh, exclusion conditions and we compare them with, the, with those working, we find the major gap in these life skills. So there you can find the differences. We measured all the uh, points, uh, all the items uh, uh, of uh, uh, this list of life skills, but we have no time to read the entire list. If you make a comparison between the two columns, uh, between the need and, their, um, and the people with their own age, uh, the same age, uh, working. So in all these items, uh, there is a gap between those who uh, uh, are um, part of the need category and their peers. But uh, there is no difference when it comes to two items between the need and the, and the peers working. That of having a dream to fulfill and the desire to learn. This means that need inactive young people who seem to be marginalized have a dream inside which can be uh, reignited, so to say, and you can do this not by considering a need as a problem, as an emergency, as somebody who has to be taken out of a difficult situation, but as somebody who uh, has a, a value and who only needs to be helped uh, in their desire to uh, be included in, uh, into the uh, virtuous cycle. So if you uh, bet on this and if you work for this, uh, you can uh, get the best results from the young people. I will now draw to a conclusion. This data tell us that uh, the fathers, uh, the parents are not enough to protect their children. Uh, young people also need other uh, allies when it comes to society. The new generations in Italy feel, currently feel uh, deprived of these uh, kind of figures. The trade unions, uh, policymakers, uh, have difficulties in interpreting the instances and the desires of the new generations. This is what the new generations tell us. And therefore, when they are asked, they express uh, a strong need for a collective community representation. And I'm referring to co-participation, so an inclusion-based uh, uh, participation. And representation should not be occasional only focusing on the individual problem. If we have a look at the results of the survey, uh, the uh, bottom part of the table, when we ask young people which factor would improve your view of the trade union role, the most important items is not uh, um, uh, if it gives uh, useful conditions for my uh, company. If the trade union worked to, um, to improve the conditions of the labor market in general. So here we see the idea uh, of young people focusing on having uh, systemic instruments for the entire generation uh, in order to have Italy uh, grow again. In conclusion, we need to go back uh, to uh, the uh, same scenario of the first uh, decades after the Second World War, but not using uh, the same methodology, of course, of the past. We need to bear in mind the transformations of the current world and with the specific features of Italy. In order to feed this uh, a uh, virtuous cycle, we need to give new space uh, to new generations. Uh, and so helping this novelty to come to the fore, to come to the stage, uh, and helping this novelty and these new generations to be winning, to be successful in the uh, processes by proper training. I started with uh, a quotation by Italo Calvino, and I will conclude by um, making another quotation from an official document of, uh, of the bishops, which summarizes uh, um, the challenge, and I will read. If society 
or the Christian community want to make something new happen again, they have to leave room for new people to take action. In other words, devising change according to the principles of sustainability requires enabling uh, new generations not only to find a job, but also to experience a new model of development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Rosina. Professor Rosina have, uh, has introduced in a very solid manner our proceedings showing that we are not uh, just talking about present uh, phenomena but uh, historical trends of a long term uh, and this trend uh, hasn't changed. And he has also told us something interesting that is that there is no uh, difference between those uh, who uh, work and those who do not work and this lack of difference is in the will to learn. So regardless of uh, one's uh, living condition, learning is really uh, an unquestionable factor in a young person's life. That means that there is no starting point whereby a person or a young person can be considered to be a lost case. There's nothing to do, not at all. I can give you examples from the Piazza dei Mestieri, the Square of Arts. For 14 years I've been involved there and I welcomed so many young people that were very disillusioned and that had been already classed by their parents or teachers saying you cannot do it, but that's not true because then they would be able to react if you don't tell us, tell them that. And so that's why we invited uh, our friend uh, Monsignor Bonsignori, who is rector of the uh, schools of Cotolengo, who has showed that it is possible to uh, carry out economic activities also for people in difficulty. That is not just a welfare, uh, welfare activity, but it is a job activity, a labor activity contributing to economic development. So I would like to invite Andrea to tell us about uh, this experience. And I ask him to be brief because now I need to manage time more strictly. Well, thank you, Dario. Thank you for the invitation. Well, very briefly, I'm not really the best person to sit at this table, but I want to tell you a story. And this story refers to what uh, we have just heard. We heard the end of a society. The end of a society occurs not when there is an economic crisis or when there is a problematic situation, but it occurs when people lose faith. And it is even worse when it is young people losing faith, that is, people who are the future of that society. So I invite you to think about this. What was the first time in which you, the people of my generation and elder people, what was your first reaction when you saw a tablet? Well, I'm going to tell you about this. We saw the same reaction in the police movies, movies from the U.S. when uh, some colleagues uh, uh, was killed uh, and then they were trying to analyze the case through those computers that were managed by gays and we were just th thinking it was science fiction. That's the kind of reaction that we had. And why am I telling you this? Because society, in particular the labor market, must necessarily consider the weakest parts of our society, those who cannot do it, because they are not even able to focus on their attitudes, on their talents. There is a need to consider the third sector in particular, not just as an economic sector, but as a productive sector as well. Truly productive, I mean. People's dignity and the dignity of the people that I'm going to show you in a moment comes with the possibility to serve 
not because we are good to them, but because they are able to do something, because otherwise the notion that has let us go on, for example, in social cooperatives, saying, well, yes, you can do something, but uh, this would be hindering our uh, system. We, it would be really difficult to go on and carry on our uh, with our activities. There is dignity and there is true dignity. So we invented something. We overthrow, overthrew this uh, way of thinking and said anybody, any person is able to do something. Saint Cotolengo used to say even the little have the right to dignity, to their little dignity. So we started with uh, young people affected by autism. People who are not familiar with this condition maybe think about movies that may be more or less nice and see when you see uh, people, young people with autism just uh, tidying up things. So please think about vending machines that you find in train stations, for example, where you buy water bottles or chocolate bars. So I ask you now, who would be the best refiller of these machines if not an autistic guy? He's exceptional, he would be exceptional. And so the Kikokoto enterprise started. It was started in Turin, it is present in Arezzo, it will be present in Rome soon and in Palermo. And this is based on the life of the best guys. So here is where we have this overthrowing of our uh, thinking, of our way of thinking. After one month of activity, we just check our balance and we see that we had a lot of revenues. Now that we have to do this for vending machines as well. So we thought, well, the guy for sure must have made a mistake. We have a pool and we have a, a guy who really likes counting coins and for each section of the pool he counts a coin and it's an important job there so that turned into a source of income and that kind of source of income is really important we can count on a salary for these people a true salary and the minister knows about this. Unfortunately, for many people who are entitled uh, a high percentage of disability recognized by health authorities, well, these cannot really have an income, they can have an allowance. But consider if all the companies involved in this social model, and there's so many of them in Italy, may contribute to the disability allowance, so maybe the state is asked to provide these persons with a thousand euros and we can cover that uh, by 80%, let's say, well, that would be a great advantage. So we don't want just to feel sorry for people, but we want to give them the chance to be part of reality, just like all the other citizens. Trade unions have been mentioned before, so I would like to refer to them. Uh, we will open the Meccanicotto enterprise with the FCA with the same principle. And we hope that this same experience can be considered all over the world. This kind of dignity is based on a small contribution that is uh, given much, much better than in any other situation. I just played a joke and some people got offended by it. I would just to repeat this joke, FCA itself, just hiring these guys, said, well, this is a dream. They want to come earlier. They never want to go back home. They are always punctual. Well, they do not know what a trade union is. Well, that's just a joke.
but uh, uh, I just wanted to say that there was such a great enthusiasm that it gives uh, dignity to um, people and also to labor and also it gives a real contribution to uh, the host country. So I think that uh, we have a great opportunity and I'm going to conclude now and very brief because it's uh, taking place at a very important point in history at a global level because it stops the approach of the traditional capitalist uh, model of the enterprise because uh, it is full of principles of sharing and fulfillment of social objectives. So these social objectives together with the desire of these people for having something of their own creates real jobs for anybody but it is also a chance to self-education, self-training in the job world and it also gives the chance to be present in the labor market with a dignity, creating a kind of philosophic system in a way that is people start start from uh, a step ahead, uh, not because they are superior, but just because they are willing to do so. And I would like to show now a short video produced by Rai Television to uh, tell about the story of this experience, of the beginning of this experience. Now we see a shop and one employee, but now we have more than 40 shops and more than 70 young people with disability condition that work there. There's also people from uh, prison and other people who are tax reform victims, so to say. So they're all part of this kind of philosophic system I was mentioning that uh, enables them to uh, give the best that they have. And we didn't really uh, imagine it would have become uh, an important reality as it has become. In the video you'll still see my face. I'm sorry about that, but I hope you like it. This project started five years ago. It started by chance, just observing what these young people used to do with uh, um, drops of uh, snacks uh, and uh, baskets and uh, trash bins. And we thought, well, if they can do it with uh, paper, why can't they do it with real objects? How many bottles are missing here? I see that uh, with him, Working with practical objects, for example, water bottles or crisp bags, it is really possible to get through his mind. So, 13 natural water. Natural water. One, two, three. There is a true opportunity of having a job and feeling integrated when recovering the materials, but also during the activity itself. Is there a friendship between you two? What do you think? Is there a friendship? Yes. Do you get on well with me? Yes. The biggest difficulty in family sometimes is this worry for the after us and then uh, being trustworthy towards uh, the capacities, the skills of their son because uh, he or she is really creating their own life with their own story and their own alternatives. Thank you, thank you. At the meeting, 
we really like listening to stories, testimonies, because it is by looking at what uh, happens in reality, one can really learn by looking at uh, how a person has found his or her own way around, it is possible to find important answers. Giuliano Poletti, as you know, is Labour Minister and most of all, he has uh, come to the meeting many times, eight times out of 11, so he has the Guinness record of uh, participation in the meeting. But I'm saying this because he has always paid attention to this challenge. He used to come to the meeting before being minister. He had another role. And over the last few years, I feel that you have tried to uh, follow this direction that we have been talking about. So please, can you tell us more about what has been done? discuss the challenges ahead of us we are just the be are we just at the beginning or do we still have to start thank you good evening thank you for the invitation and uh, i would like to refer to some of the facts proposed by professor rosina because i think that addressing these issues means being aware of something we are not uh, talking about something that happened yesterday and that will change tomorrow. We are considering very complex situations that have a big impact on social behavior and so they really are very much linked to culture, the way of thinking and how we consider our relations with the other because we are our relations, otherwise we wouldn't be anything. So, if we consider this as a starting point, we can realize that uh, the things that we do, we often judge them in an improper way. We don't put them into a broader view, a broader horizon. We do not try to communicate appropriately the objective, the destination. And we may believe that we can get to our destination in a very short time because we are skilled and we found the key to solve the problem. Well, I think that uh, things work differently and uh, one has to be aware that these uh, situations are long-term issues and uh, people need to work in a constant way. And this cannot be taken for granted. Look at uh, governments people in governments, the first thing they try to do is uh, to cancel everything that has been done before and explain that what those who used to govern before didn't know anything. Well, is this really possible? Is it, can we really believe that uh, people get into the government then can dismiss everything that has been done by their predecessors? Well, no, it might be the case that some will come after me saying, Mr. Poletti didn't understand anything and then we have to start from scratch. Well, let's stop for a moment and let's think that there are some fundamentals that are fundamentals for society, for community, for the whole people, and then the tools to obtain the results can be considered in different ways, policies, investments and choices. However, fundamentals must be the pillars underpinning the whole community. Otherwise, we are we keep stuck there, just building and demolishing, building and demolishing without reaching any result. Rosina, Professor Rosina mentioned an interesting uh, thing when he talked about the time when things started to change. Italy went through a very difficult uh, time uh, during the post-war period. Now we have areas in the country where there is wealth and people are living really, really successfully. But at that time, there was really misery there and people really didn't know how to uh, survive. And it was thanks to those women and men with their commitment, with their beliefs, 
that that situation was changed into something that is now producing wealth and well-being. So if this is the case, I think that the critical point can be summarized in a word which has been overly, overtly used, and this is defending. Defending, defending. Defending labor, defending employment, defending small and big enterprises, defending people, defending young people, defending, defending, defending. Well, the notion of defense really immediately comes with something else, that is, no change, because change causes fear, preoccupation, risk, and so maintaining the status quo. But the history of humanity tells us that uh, standing at a halt is impossible and that just defending, defending, defending can break our system. It just uh, is the condition not to have our system to function. So I believe that the right choice is to accept the challenge and to play a protagonist role. Just like uh, those guys demonstrated and all the activities of the Cotolengo uh, institutions demonstrated that there's always opportunities. We need to have the right eyes to see them and the right heart to feel them and imagine that it is possible to do them. So I think that this is really something important that we are, uh, are going to consider. It is a long process that we have to consider and it entails, first of all, to consider on a cultural level some of the uh, points that used to be discarded. First of all, it is of the utmost importance to know, to be able to do and also to be able to be. We are not capable of connecting these three conditions. We can't have a comprehensive view. We don't think that if you have studied, then you can know, then you know how to behave, then you know how to be. Well, knowledge is a basic condition of human beings. So knowing and having information is fundamental, but knowing is not sufficient. As Professor Rosina said, rightly said, one has to be then in the condition to be able to put things into practice and to test whether one's knowledge can be used practically and in one's life processes and also in job processes. And then, if you know something and if you know how to do something, but you are not able to be, you cannot really behave in a community, you cannot share, you are not willing to take on a responsibility, you cannot really become a trustworthy person, then the first two factors are not enough. This third element is essential. If we uh, design a model with these three pillars, I think that things should work. First of all, we should be aware that we can do it because we come from an era in which very often we had to face situations before which we have been asked to just leave it, to just give in. But waiting and giving in is really the worst solution. It is rather necessary to invest in the possibility of doing things, even the most incredible and difficult things, even things that we can hardly imagine and conceive of. So we started to build some factors that on a cultural level could help us overcome those obstacles that we found. The first point is the relation between knowledge and labor. Consider that uh, we have a long history in our country in which a thesis has been proposed, that is that the educational system had to be separate, totally separate from the labor market, from the economy, from enterprises, because with closer relations between these worlds, the economic world would have influenced and polluted and negatively affected the uh, methods of knowledge in terms of values. 
I think that this idea is wrong. We need experience. We need to link knowledge with the know-how. In this respect, I would like to uh, add something. It is not easy to address uh, this uh, subject, but uh, sometimes it is necessary to do it. Where does this idea of separation come from? I believe that this is due to something specific. It is due to the idea that uh, companies, businesses, after all, are thought, are conceived as something negative. I have the feeling that uh, the perception, the general perception is that the businesses are places where there is labor exploitation and that this is in a way accepted because otherwise there wouldn't be anything to do with jobs and employment. But I would like to change this view and I would propose to view businesses as something positive that people should love. So this is a cultural problem. So businesses are social infrastructures. Having said that, some people may say you are the labor minister and you talk about businesses too much. But the book I studied taught me that uh, jobs are present in enterprises, in businesses. I do not really know other ways. If anybody has a book that shows that it is possible to do this in a different way, please give it to me. So far, nobody has given me this another recipe, so I will continue in uh, this uh, way. Some people may uh, raise the objection that some mm, managers really are not behaving properly. Of course, there is uh, managers that are really good, excellent and trustworthy, and then there are other managers that are fools, that are so bad. And this is the same for ministers, for policemen and policewomen, for professors. There's no good and evil categories, but there is the men and women who behave well and men and women who behave badly. So we have this assumption that if you are a business person and you do something and you, if you consider that a business person that does something, does that just to his or her own interest, well, that's a wrong assumption because there is also a matter of responsibility of being people to the full, being able to help the others and being able to fulfill something for themselves and for the other as members of a community. I think this is a fundamental point. So let us be frank. This issue should be addressed in this way. We have to consider that this is the true dimension on which it is possible to work. So a dialogue must be established between skills, competencies, knowledge and labor. So to do what we have done with programs alternating schooling and uh, working. Is this also open to criticism? Yes, of course, but I come from a family of farmers and my father taught me that uh, to understand whether a thing can work or not, you have to try to do it. So we want to test things and then we have to be humble, have the humility to ask ourselves, does it work? and if it doesn't work to understand where the problems are and the experience can be used to correct the limits of our actions. But not just because I've done this, it will work, or because I did that, then it will be faulty. Anything that I've done in my life always may have had some faults, but it is normal, it is natural. Things must be always improved and changed. So this system of alternating schooling and uh, uh, working, of course, can be improved. In the same way, it is important to invest in the quality of our educational offer. But choices must be made in this respect. How should investment be made in this field? 
if you think about the term investment, I'm sure that uh, we immediately think about streets, bridges, railway tracks, hospitals. Rarely people would think of an hour dedicated to no knowledge or learning as an investment. Well, we need to change this. The first and foremost investment is knowledge. So if we are correct in this sense, even in politic, in the public policies, the first investment should concern learning, education, and knowledge. This is coherence between what you say and what you do. So I believe that we've made a right choice in launching the program Industry 4.0 to uh, gather the innovations in the ICT industry. This year we'll try to include knowledge in the investment chapter of uh, uh, our budget law because otherwise if we have a very advanced machine and we have no persons able to use it where well, the investment was wrong because the two things must go together. So we need to have a new centrality on the subject of investing in knowledge, in learning that is linked to innovation in technology and everything else. So we first have to work with the professional schools, vocational schools, because uh, also in this field there is so much to do. Well, in Italy, from time to time, those who govern um, often try to do something which is quite, um, you know, sly. So when we do not have, we do not have enough money for something, we experiment. We make an experiment. We are interested in uh, saying that we've tried to do some things. Well, I don't like this theory very much. I believe that experimentation is something serious which should be carried out, but with the aim to state at the end whether it goes well and you can continue with experimentation or if it's a flop, if it's not working properly, you simply stop it. So if I need to understand whether an experimentation works or does not work. So we need to verify, to assess whether something is works is working or not. So we've experimented. We experimented the apprenticeship in the dual form. Now we need to decide it works, and so we need to decide whether we continue with this young student's apprenticeship, so training and, uh, and work, or if we are convinced that it does not uh, work properly or it is useless, so we need to stop it. Well, I think it works. I think uh, that the experience carried out in other European countries uh, proved to be successful. But having said that, we will debate the issue, but I would propose to stabilize this new uh, training channel, to have it at our disposal. All this leads us to a topic uh, which Professor uh, Rosina mentioned and which is one of the most complicated things to be carried out, namely how to manage transition. So accompanying, we are confronted with a change, which is radical, profound, yet it has a peculiar feature vis-a-vis -vis the past. This change is faster and more pervasive than uh, all the past experiences. So those who deal with drafting the laws and establishing the rules um, are confronted with uh, an important difficulty. They, it is very, very difficult to regulate and to, um, to keep the pace with such a fast-changing world. We cannot continue to think that we can regulate everything in details. We cannot continue to focus on laws and focus, uh, focusing on changing the, a comma of a law. 
because if we waste three years of time for uh, achieving the perfect law, the world will have changed in the meantime. And so the logics uh, are changing very rapidly. So we need more um, rules, general rules, and we need more criteria which are used as reference points. We need less rules, we need less details, we need less red tape, less bureaucracy, and less circular letters. And this is another important topic. And I will now uh, conclude by stating that today we've chosen a pathway, namely that of connecting uh, uh, work, uh, training, uh, and the Ministry of Labor is working with the Ministry of Research, with the Ministry of um, Education, because in Italy all the policies are vertical. Uh, everything is made up of silos. Uh, but we need to have a, a totally different uh, approach. We need transversal, a transversal view. Uh, when it comes to the law for the fight against poverty, nine times out of ten, that problem in a certain family is another problem. The family in, in, we are confronted with a family in which no one has an employment. So we need to have, uh, we need to establish a dialogue between the various ministries because the problems we are confronted with uh, need to be tackled transversally in all their aspects. So a person is a person when he works, uh, when the person works or does not work, when the person is healthy or not healthy. So we cannot continue to reason in terms of silos, in terms of uh, um, closed, sealed compartments. And the citizens should not be the ones who uh, are responsible for um, talking with the public administration. If we do not uh, succeed in doing this, we will uh, end up by wasting time and energies. So today we work. We want to work to active towards active policies, uh, accompanying policies, uh, to creating infrastructure systems which help our young people to um, to face the problems in the best way possible. Uh, bear in mind that we need to collaborate openly with the entire society. I'm the first one to be convinced that there is nobody in Rome who is able alone with a single regulation or with a law or with a very good policy to tackle all these problems. The problems can be tackled by those who experience them all every day, by those who share uh, the condition and the real situation of people. So with policies, we need to create the scenarios, the frameworks, uh, and we need to produce opportunities. And then we need to work so that society can uh, act um, in the best way possible, uh, namely to uh, cater and to be engaged with the individuals. Uh, and so we need to work to face these problems. This is a sense of the things we would like to do. And to conclude, I would like to say something personal. I come from a family of farmers. My father taught me one thing very clearly. He said, if you plant a fruit tree only if, or only because you are convinced that you're going to uh, take the fruit, you would not plant all the trees, all the fruit trees. If this reasoning uh, were the reasoning of our ancestors, we wouldn't have nothing now. We need to think for the future. We need to have to be far-sighted. We do not have to think that we will be uh, those who harvest uh, uh, the fruits. We need to think about future generations and not simply um, have a view um, within five or ten years. And this is what counts, what matters when you uh, carry out policies, when you think about policies. Thank you very much to Giuliano Poletti. I will uh, uh, simply conclude by three um, remarks. We need a framework, we need a general picture. We do not need, we need a general picture and not many red tape, many details. So a structural aid for young people. And if you choose a policy, it needs to be continued over time. You cannot have a policy at um, which lasts one year and, uh, and then it stops for the other year. The second remark, when the minister said income, employment and enterprise being um, 
So we, we cannot confuse wage with the work, with the employment. Wage can be integrated. There are uh, proposals, uh, for instance, uh, uh, increasing the taxes on robots, as Zuckerberg said. This is welfare. This is a, an aid in a difficult moment for a family or an individual. But this is not employment. Job creation means um, helping people to fulfill themselves. To be gratified, the employment was an extraordinary element of social mobility which enabled uh, the past generations uh, to fulfill their dreams uh, and to have a driving force which became uh, economic development uh, and which uh, enabled Italy to reach important results in the past. The very last remark, and I will conclude, uh, is that uh, we are confronted with a challenge, a challenge to the uh, responsibility for us all. Um, too often we, uh, we blame policymakers or we blame the trade unions, uh, we blame others. It is a challenge which is a challenge for us all. It's not a challenge to defend your stance or to defend your position. We must work so that uh, we can help them and ourselves to accept this challenge, not to defend your position but to be able to re-earn the inheritance and to possess it. This is something which is valid for our young people, and it is a challenge. Uh, we have been focusing on for the last uh, few days of the meeting. I would like to thank all the speakers, and I, remember, I remind you that you can contribute to building the meeting uh, through the donations. You're going to find uh, some uh, desks uh, donate now in the various pavilions. This is also another challenge to our own responsibility, a possibility such as that of a meeting which enable us, enables us to um, analyze the reality, needs uh, funds to uh, be able to survive and to continue. So please donate uh, um, as much as you can. Thank you very much and uh, have a good evening.